Thinking will not overcome fear. Action will. Welcome to Mad Acre Farms. I'm Ryan. And this is our go paddock. Uh, you may remember when we first got that shed back there, we initially had our uh, does out here, our dolings, I should say, out here, and we had them in an electric fence. Well, those females kept jumping the fence. I think it was Chris Brown that once said, these does aren't loyal. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so they kept jumping the fence, and we knew we couldn't leave these guys out here. Uh, one, we didn't want them venturing over to our neighbor's property eating all the wonderful corn and soybeans because we like our neighbors. So we put those guys back inside the barn and knew we had to uh, do something a little bit different and I actually build a paddock that be able to hold these guys in and hopefully keep them from jumping in and out. Um, now, this is what we came up with. Uh, but to bring that back here full circle, um, initially I did not want to conquer this task myself. I was very reluctant on doing this. And the reason being is I don't have that skill set. I'm not a handy person. Uh, so um, it was about a year ago since we got those goats. And we made several calls, reached out to several fencing companies. Um, some just blatantly turned us down. Others just stood us up and never showed up for to give us a quote. Um, and... I had this nagging sensation in my in the back of my head constantly saying, when are you going to get that paddock done? When are you going to get that paddock done? When are my ghosts going to be outside? When are you going to get that paddock done? I need that paddock done yesterday. So I diverted my attention from the market garden and I started on the paddock. And believe it or not, it started right here. I hand dug this post and put it in the ground with some cement and that was the first start. But then a month later, I hadn't done any more. And that nagging sensation started back up. So I said, I'm gonna ease the tension and I threw two more posts in with some H braces and said, that should be keep her quiet for a little bit, but it didn't. So I got back at it and finally got her done. Um, and this is our paddock. Uh, it's the buck, Buckling's paddock, but this guy here is, our paddock is roughly 35 feet wide by 66 feet long. Don't question the math and why. Um, it's pretty purely it's aesthetics. Um, I had a picture in my head, a plan, and that's what I went with. Um, I watched some video and it said that when you're build, building animal paddocks you should always plan for the future and that's what I did here I knew what I know what I want my property to look like in the long run and so that's what we did now the posts that we did were eight inch wide corner posts with a four inch H brace we also tied those in uh, with some high tensile wire uh, from there we went with the five inch post as well um, and then we use welded wire fencing. I did stretch this here uh, using the, the typical well, uh, woven wire stretcher uh, that you can get from your local farmer fleet or uh, box store or even on those online places. Um, what's nice about the paddock, it works well. Uh, we haven't had any issues. The boys have been out here for about a week now and um, they haven't tried to get out. They're enjoying life. A couple things that I will talk about here and um, why and goals in, in the future throughout the video um, so you guys can get an idea where we're going with this and how the farm and our animal um, husbandry is going to grow um, when it comes to rotational grazing and uh, providing our, our animals with a safe and secure space. Now, if you look here, there's roughly about, give or take 10 feet from our neighbor's property to our property. So here, we're gonna actually throw in some service berries. Um, that's gonna give two folds. Um, it's gonna act as uh, a windbreak, but also it's gonna give a, a kind of an obstruction. So if the ghosts do get froggy and decide they wanna leap, um, they'll see the obstruction there. And most animals, 
do not want to jump on something they want to have clear space so we're going to be lining this area with service berries but then also we're going to come back in through and put a, a second fence in and leave a it's going to have a pass through but have a second fence so if the ghosts do get out they have another extra layer of security to keep them from going into our our neighbor's property but also it's going to help keep the predators out as well and as well as those pests that like to eat our our vegetables in our market garden you know who you are dear you know who you are <laughs> edit that out but let's go on down here we'll just take you guys around here so again we have another this path through goes all the way around here and we're gonna be we have talked to our neighbors we're gonna be pulling up the barbed wire fence we're gonna replace that again um, with the same setup that we have here um, just to add the extra security for the goats, but the pastures are going to have the service berries in them. And then, one of my favorites, we're going to go to our first gate. One thing I wanted to make sure on our paddocks that we had in the path through uh, entrance and an exit. So the first one up front, we didn't really go into. Um, we have, oh, be careful. I thought you were going to fill that hole. It's on my list of things to do. <laughs> I wish we had that on camera. <laughs> you do. <too. laughs> I don't have you actually fall in it at all. <laughs> they know. They know. <laughs> they know. They know. They know. Isn't that how the oh, song goes? Oh gosh, that hurts. So, so just so you guys know, I just I just fell in this hole. This right here is evidence that Ryan uh, incorrectly put the post. And had to pull the post back out. I didn't know. I didn't know now. I, I dug that hole and just uh, and remeasured and figured out I oh, messed God. up. So just that was God. That no. was me. No, <laughs> God put was, me. God had me put that hole in the no, wrong spot. You did not. That's the second time you fell a hole. I you know. should remember. <laughs> I know. But uh, so this right here is our. Uh, so up there we have an eight foot gate. Um, the thought process behind that is that with the eight foot gate. Uh, with our tractor uh, it's a direct line of sight so we can just go in right with our tractor but here um, in the path through the pass through I should say in the pass through uh, we have a four foot gate and we have here we have the one hand latching system how much was that um, this was $30 this actually is worth every single penny yes yes because it is. that one sucks I don't like it yep that one doesn't have a latching system on it it's not, it wasn't in the budget but eventually we'll get one once the budget clears up. But what's nice about that, you just close it and it's latched. Right now the one up front has the chain on it. Which is very difficult to get off. So, But inside here, a couple things I tried to do to make this very functional and easy for us. Especially when it comes to feeding and water. I gave direct access to the feed and water. So we can feed and water our animals from the outside. Uh, versus having it to come through the gates and do it every time. As I already know, we, we work full-time jobs, so most of our work is done at the hours, and it was dark. And we installed this fence here at night. And as you can see, that's kind of flimsy. It's not really stretched properly. It does the job. The goats aren't going to get out, but it doesn't have that nice, tight, crisp stretch that we like. Uh, so I potentially will do this back over here in the future. The last mistake that I know that I made is the uh, the grass. So initially we didn't have anything growing here. This actually was the prior owner's burn area. So there was no vegetation whatsoever. Not even weeds. Um, I even threw some grass seed out here. Couldn't get it to grow. Fortunately, I didn't have to do uh, the, each post by hand. My wonderful brother-in-law, thank you, Dan, came with his skid loader and auger set up. And he helped drill and set every post. It literally knocked off months of me having to do each post by hand. Um, so that was awesome. And then with his skid loader, he actually broke up the dirt and debris brought up the trash we clean all the trash out that we could get to we can get and then i um i seed it with alfalfa and clover mix and a lot of weeds and everything started to grow i initially left it like it was and thought it'd be wonderful for the ghost but then i saw the ghost not moving around and not really playing so i said you know what i better get in there clear up this space that was a mistake the reason that is a mistake is what I learned now is goats like to eat up high they don't want to really eat anything below their knees or they don't want to eat they, they don't want to eat the the woody stuff 
they want to eat the foliage like they're doing over there we want to build this pasture up so they ain't here working this pasture pooping peeing doing what goats do we're going to actually be splitting this pasture off 50-50 uh, giving half of it to the girls temporarily and then we're going to be also bringing in uh, Jamie's going to be bringing in her chickens her Polish chickens to actually scratch up the area put in some manure we'll come back through reseed and hopefully this is going to look a world of different imagination cap get back to it get back to it we plan for the future I, again I knew what I, I knew what I wanted this to look like so if you look over here you can see that we have our compost pile I already started, uh, I put another post up here and we're gonna have a gate that comes here. That's give us access to our main pass-through. Um, and then on to the left of it is gonna be our compost pile. And I'm actually hopefully gonna be starting that this weekend. Um, but, uh, and then behind that, there'll be future paddocks. Um, I'm hoping to put in another three to four uh, paddocks. But once it's all done, the goal is to have multiple layers of kind of like I said security uh, everything fenced in the paddocks fenced in and then say for instance if we're rotational grazing and we need extra space because this is all enclosed what we can do is bring something back here and let it let it be in the graze which would be nice right now we have our pigs in here and then you guys probably remember our initial thought process initial plan was to allow our pigs to pretty much disturb the earth and get everything tore, tore up, till up. We come behind them, clean up, seed, and create our paddocks. Well, a little wrench in our plan is we started to find different um, contaminants like glass, metal shards, um, paint cans. Paint cans just things that we didn't want the animals getting into. Things like this right here, if they digest this, this could potentially kill them. Um, so we decided to halt that plan and we left the goats, I mean, we left the pigs here. Um, it's not ideal at all. This is not what we want. Um, these pigs should be all the way down there by now, but because of when we get down farther, I'll show you guys, we had to halt that and leave them here. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is kind of what we do with the chickens. We're going to be putting uh, a mulch layer in here uh, to help keep down, tamp down the smell, help keep down the weeds and things that the chicken uh, pigs aren't eating, and then also just give them uh, something to be able to do. There's cans that, that and we can we're going to clean this area up, and the, the stuff is just as we clean, it comes out the ground. It's like a treasure trove of junk. What we're going to do is we're going to bring in the heavy. Uh, equipment eventually and we're gonna clean this out ourselves sift through it get the trash and debris out bring in some good soil and then plant seed start our paddocks and get our animals moving the way we want them to um, until then unfortunately everything's on kind of a halt um, now I do want to get this paddock here where the pigs at done what that's gonna cost for is for me to remove some trees and one thing we have to do is get on the same page when it comes to me and the wife. I'm okay with chopping down some trees. She's not, but them trees gotta go. In the middle, they're in the way of progress. Don't but, talk to me, talk to them. I am talking to them, they got my back. But once we get those trees out, I'm gonna bring in some more trees uh, and all will be well. We're gonna actually put up each paddock. We have tree, a couple trees in front and a couple trees in back. We'll just show you guys how far this goes back. But you can look here. I wanna show these guys here. You can see there's broken glass here. And we try to pick up everything as much as possible. Um, but, and our initial goal was to get someone in to come and do this. Again, it was one of those things where the person never showed back up. So we'll do it ourselves now. The property makes a full circle and it goes walking, walking, you keep walking, you walk a little bit more, just a taste of it some more. And it takes you back to the 
home of our common love garden. That's not there yet. <laughs> our property is really small, so we're full circle. We're back at the goat paddock. We have our guys over here enjoying life now. Look at them. Oh, they look happy. So this is pretty much it, guys. Um, hope you guys like this video. Um, I know it's not an in-depth tutorial on how to uh, do a goat goat paddock, um, but if you guys want to see something like that in the future, uh, we do have several that we got to put up. Let us know. Leave some comments below. Also, leave some suggestions below. Things that uh, you guys feel that we should implement for our goats. We are not professionals here. Um, as always, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, tell a million friends or two, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.